Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. It's not date or time specific. So whenever you come upon it, it if it speaks to you, it could be your message. Keep in mind it is general, not private, so it may not resonate for everyone. Um, what else? Ah, it's Gemini season. So let me first say happy birthday to our Gemini sun signs. And I'm wishing you all the best in your next journey around the sun. Um, we have lovely energy building in the sign of Gemini right now. The new moon is on the 6th. I'll be uploading a, a special reading for that tomorrow. Um, we have a lovely stellium in Gemini, which is when we have three or more planets gathered in a sign or um, a house. In this case, it's in Gemini, so the sun is there. The moon is going to connect with the sun on the 6th. We have Venus there in the heart of the sun. That's called Kazemi. We have... Um, Jupiter is in there and uh, Mercury is moving into Gemini, I think, as I record this. So we have quite a lot of beautiful energy um, for the whole, pretty much the whole month of June. All right. So I did do the uh, June 2024 monthly energy update reading. Please check it out. I take the month week by week, both astrologically and in a tarot spread. So go check it out. All right, I am pulling from Priestess of Light to activate the reading for you. You get card 19, death and rebirth. So this is talking about eighth house themes, Scorpio energy, um, darkness to light. Yes. So for those of you who feel like you've been kind of going through some um, phase of growth, change, and transformation you'll understand that energy because it is that, you know, we don't, don't always, it doesn't always feel good in the beginning process because we have to leave things behind, parts of ourselves, patterns, beliefs, perceptions. Um, we start to change and grow and ascend um, and we lose people along the way. So that's sort of what I'm feeling here is your um, moving from a phase of darkness into light and it's card 19 one and nine is 10 which is completion and we set back to a one which in tarot is an ace so it's aces up okay um, I'm gonna pull the spread for you give you my general impressions we'll get details from the clarifier there we go the magician is the overall energy so it's like you're the master here. Um, this can be about manifestation um, and your belief in your abilities that you have everything you need, all the tools in the tool chest, so to speak, to manifest what you desire and believe you deserve. What's crossing you here is the world card. Great, because that feels to me like you're manifesting your way to some completion. Um, the world card speaks of endings and new beginnings. And before we, you know, step into the light and out of the darkness, we kind of have to close something out. And that is representing the challenge here. So you're manifesting the closure of one cycle and the beginning of something new. I love that. Yes, in your unconscious awareness, Knight of Cups, the most romantic card in the deck, um, an offer of love or at least somebody's expression of that. Yes, in the past, some um, back and forth, an exchange, an energetic exchange of ideas, communication, uh, could have been a lot of frenetic energy. Where are we right now in your conscious awareness? The glorious four of wands, beginnings of life partnership. Ah, near future, eight of swords. Okay, um, so there may be a bit of a tendency coming up to sort of um, go back and second guess yourself, right? Am I on the right track? Am I doing the right thing? Because a lot of this is going to be new to you, especially if you're beginning a new cycle. And it's, it's, um, it's like being a babe in the woods. Think, think page of pentacles, taking that first step into a new environment, a new situation, um, a fresh start in this connection even is possible where you kind of have to approach it in a, in, in a brand new way. And we tend to kind of do ourselves no favors by putting our, our, you know, 
mind into overdrive, overthinking, second guessing, full of self-doubt, self-limiting beliefs. No, 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 and no. So we'll get there in a second with the clarifiers. Here's the magician in the world. And it's very Gemini kind of. There's the page of pentacles that I was just talking about. Yes. Okay, so we're looking for some kind of a, of a return. It feels to me like that's the focus. Closing out um, one cycle, beginning the next cycle, uh, manifesting someone who shows up for you, that has your back, that you can depend upon. Here it is in your unconscious awareness. We have the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Wands. Love and passion on offer. So I can see that that's what you're manifesting, but it's coming at the end of something else that may be a little dark that you're closing out. And so it's new for you. So it makes sense that you would get stuck like a deer in the headlights now and then, but what you don't want to do is over process it. Okay. This is something you're going to have to feel your way through, not think your way through. Let's go to the Knight of Cups. Yes, Chariot, Ten of Cups, Ace of Wands. Like I said, there's the Ace, and it's the Ace of Wands is the is the light, right? Um, it feels like there's this divine gift of inspired passion rising up within you. Back, you know, back to that space where you want to move forward. You have the will to move forward in this connection to see, or in any connection. You know, maybe a brand new one is what's on the menu right? To kind of seek out the love and the happiness that you desire and deserve. And I'm saying that a few times for a reason, because we have Venus and Mercury together. Well, while we have, well, Mercury won't be conjunct exactly, but close enough. We'll have the sun and the moon together at 16 degrees of Gemini and Venus will be there too. So, and then Mercury's right behind and Mercury is our head. It's our beliefs and Venus is our heart right? We have to believe that we're worthy of what we desire and deserve, in case that wasn't clear. Okay, so the Eight of Wands in the past. Oh my gosh, let me try that again. Eight of Swords, Temperance, Ooh, okay. Um, I almost feel like whatever this energy was about could have been some communication that uh, left you with more worries than it took care of. Um, maybe questions about this person's intentions. The temperance energy is self-control and restraint. Um, but it doesn't seem to be calming your mind at all. I do feel like you had some communication here. Um, in the past could be quite recent and you're trying not to over dramatize the situation. So you're sort of worried about it on your own. And with the seven of swords underneath, I don't think it's avoidance necessarily. I feel like it, there's, you know how you kind of get a feeling and you're like, yeah, this is not passing the smell test. I feel like that's where you went in your mind. That's where you went in your head. And, and that's why in the future with the eight of swords, you'll go back to that tendency to kind of have doubts. Um, and maybe not even about yourself. It could be about the connection. So let's see the four of, because in your unconscious awareness here, it's very powerful. It's a big focus on emotional availability, vulnerability, and offer from the heart, happily ever after themes, moving forward, making progress, and the fire, you know, and the will to do it. But I'm seeing the challenge here is there's either a fresh start you're trying to manifest um, that would bring this person on your path who's ready for something mature who's ready to be with you in 3D. So let's see the Four of Wands. And the King of Pentacles is a masculine archetype of a life partner. So we have, yeah, there it is. Um, there's some conflict here. 
around the theme of this connection communication about what your expectations are where is this headed um you know and and the four of wands is a marriage ceremony i mean that's what's really happening there um it's a little bit more creatively done in this deck but it feels to me like there's um some tension around it um again drawing back on conversations of the past that left you worried uh, but trying not to overreact, exercising some self-control and restraint, but not sure. Um, am I dealing with somebody who's going to show up for me? Or am I dealing with somebody who's just not, does not have my best interest at heart? Right? It's coming through as a question. Like, I don't think I'm seeing the receipts here. But it does feel like that's part of your issue. Um, the Eight of Swords. Seven of Pentacles, Two of Wands. Interesting. So um, the Eight of Swords in the future is kind of coming through in, in the way where it's buying you a little time. So it'll feel like you're stuck, but there's this energy of, well, I've planted these seeds of intention. And since we have the new moon in your sign, Gemini, it's a perfect time to do it. I planted the seeds of intention for what I want, for the for what I want and the path forward, what I'm choosing, what I envision for myself in a world of possibilities. And I just kind of have to wait and trust my intuition, my inner knowing. Um, and yeah, that's not the card I thought it was. Um, I just did a, a reading where the other um, sign got the card that would be aligned with the high priestess. So that's what I'm thinking of. But the high priestess is your inner knowing and trusting the messages and the signs and synchronicities that you're receiving. So I like seeing her there. Um, but I have a feeling that you're going to kind of keep falling into this pattern of second guessing yourself because you have questions about whether or not you can trust this person's intentions. Time will tell. Okay, um, and it doesn't feel like I'm seeing anything completely untoward or negative, but if you had an experience with this person already where they weren't honest with you or you felt betrayed on some level or deceived on some level, you could be trying to decide if you want to re-up a new cycle with this person. Okay, so for some of you, I'm giving, this is a general reading, so I want to give you the variations on a the theme. Um, and if that speaks to you, I'm going to take it to the extended and um, see what, we're, what we've got going with this King of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands person. Right? Are they coming back for you? Are they coming back to get their needs met and to move on? It seems like that's the question that we're pondering. And I want to get that answer in the extended, okay? Um, before I do that, I want to just invite you, I'm going to tell you the astrology that showed up here. I'm going to invite you to subscribe to the channel below. If my readings give you any insights, confirmations, are helpful in any way, even just entertaining, <laughs> do help me get my messages out to other people just like you who are looking for some insight and guidance on their connections all right we have the magician is mercury rules virgo and gemini the world card is saturn aquarius and capricorn we have the page of pentacles taurus virgo capricorn uh, taurus in the king of pentacles sagittarius in the knight of wands knight of cups is pisces cancerian energy here in the chariot Temperance is more Sagittarian energy. Um, and the High Priestess is the moon. Um, I associate her with Pisces, though. Okay, so that's what I've got for you. There is um, There are a couple links below to take you to the extended. There's one that says uh, Gemini Monthly. That is a renewal, and you get access to to like four different collections, Gemini, new moon, full moon in the monthly, um, energy update extendeds are available for that monthly renewal or the one time is just this extended only. Okay, so I'll see you there. 
happy, happy birthday to our Gemini sons. Um, I'm heading to the extended now. See you in a second.